This video is about everything that you need to know about bachelors in computer science from University of London Coursework. So, I'll go over the subjects they're offering, the course they're offering, the slide committee, the examinations, the time it takes, and finally the fees, and also after that, the good, the bad, and the ugly about the university. about computer science degree offered by Goldsmith and also I wanted to make this video because I missed a lot of information in the last one and I think I can add on to more things which might help you out. So you can jump on to each timestamp below to know the things that you want to know. So the subjects they're offering are quite fast and I'll go over each one of them um, briefly talking about them how they are and what they offered but you can also look at the syllabus and all the resources on this link that I have in the description and the website that I'm showing you. Uh, it's a GitHub ripple made by, uh, made and managed by the uh, students of this degree, which is also open for all. The only thing that is not open for all is the Salad community. Obviously, it's for the students only. You have to pay for it to get into it. But uh, there's another thing that you can do is go on the Reddit uh, University of London computer science page. From there, you can join the Discord group, which has both the students and the prospective students and the students who are just researching about this degree and you know, looking for more options. So yeah, all the links are in the description. So more on the subjects, I'll go over each one of them. So this is the Repel. Uh, it's uh, handled by the students and it has uh, basically everything that a student might need to learn it has extra resources and some links to external videos so let's talk about the specialisms and the subjects starting with the subjects now as you can see they're level four five and level six so year one two and three so if you were about to do the degree in three years uh, you will be doing level four then level five and level six but again, you can take uh, subjects differently. You can have level five subjects if you have completed some certain level four subjects. But let's just talk about level four and level five subjects because level five subjects, uh, you can go and look uh, at the syllabus. These are here. These are quite a lot of uh, subjects here. Uh, a lot of them to choose from. Uh, because I am in still level 5, I cannot tell you about the uh, experience of these level 6 subjects. So let's just talk about level 4 and 5. So level 4 subjects. These are all 8 subjects. They both level 4 and 5 have 8 subjects. So talking about mathematics, there are 3 subjects that have mathematics. Uh, that's computation mathematics, discrete mathematics, again by, the, by its name, and fundamentals of computer science. Fundamentals of computer science and discrete mathematics have quite similar topics. So if you were to take them, uh, it's better to take them like together because you would be doing essentially the same thing in both of them. Uh, but there are quite a uh, some differences in fundamentals of computer science. Uh, talking about the uh, computation mathematics, this is uh, the uh, your average high school mathematics it's not that hard but if you were good in your high school mathematics you won't have problem in this one algorithms and data structures it's the uh, introduction to data structures so you won't be like uh, doing it in some node.js or um, going into actual coding they will show you that they have some exercises that you can do in code but mostly it's pseudocode and uh, the data structures explained in pseudocode so it's smart sort quick sort and all the sorting and all that data structure stuff and how computers work now uh, just to remind you some of these subjects have a thing called prior learning if you have a certain certificate first one is the how computer works so if you have this google it certificate that is also offered on coursera then you can apply for prior learning for this specific subject uh, you can get the 15 credit hours easily without even paying for this subject so you can again save them save some money there but you would be give paying for the google id certificate but before you apply you can like uh, skip this how computer works because it's basic uh, computer things that you do in your like 10th class yeah it's quite easy it's an easy subject now the coding ones uh introduction to programming one and introduction to programming two are both uh, as you can see these are did these don't have any written exams and these don't have any group projects but they have individual projects and, and so the only subject that has group project is the web development 
and this subject is something that I had uh, quite a lot of expectations from but it was quite up to that mark that I was uh, like thinking it to be because the guidelines for final projects weren't clear enough and that led to a project that wasn't up to the up to their marks but we did work on it like for hours and weeks and uh, but yeah this is the only problematic subject web development other than that uh, every other subject in level 4 is pretty good so level 5 uh, year 2 I am currently in the fourth semester so that means I'm taking four of these subjects so uh, the subjects that I'm taking right now is agile software projects um, computer uh, database networks and web graphics programming and programming with data but other than that I'm have completed all of the other subjects and computer security is quite simple it's easy if you have good researching skills and good writing skills you'll get good grades because mostly it's researching and then writing in the midterms. Object oriented programming, this is one of let's say toughest. You're using C and then you're researching the ways to solve a few problems. You have two projects yet, you have to submit one for midterm and one for finals. But overall, it's a good subject. But uh, it requires a lot, quite a lot of researching and self study. Then comes software design and development. Software design and development is mostly, uh, it's not, you're not designing any software. It's talking about what goes into designing software and what practices are good and what practices aren't good and what coding methods should be applied for any code. So it's a general uh, subject that talks about programming and an application and what goes into making all of that. Uh, other than that, Algorithms and Data Structures 2 is the continuation of the previous one. It has some uh, coding side, but again, those are practice coding. They do have some questions for how would you solve this problem in Node in finals. Sometimes they do give it. So yeah, it has that coding side of using C++ and Node for to apply all of those things that you studied in algorithms and data structures one and this also introduces quite a lot of different methods and all other different data structures that you didn't study in uh, data structures one so that's all about uh, the level five subjects and specialisms they offer is uh, you can see here it's data science game development machine learning and artificial intelligence physical computing user experience virtual reality you can click on each one of them and see what subjects that you will be taking from level six so uh, from all of these specialisms you will be taking these subjects a uh, few of these subjects in your final year uh, according to what specialism you take you can take some specialism or you can just do a general computer science degree without any specialism and you can pick whatever subject you want but if you want that extra certificate you can you know take this one specialism i'm quite interested in game development and web development uh, i guess it's one of the that i've seen that this is one of the most strong suit and something that they have been focusing a lot in this degree we have been working with javascript quite a lot we have been working yeah python is there too uh, c++ is there too but javascript and uh, back inside of web and programming with the data and everything that's all i believe is something quite uh, close to uh, web development so this is i guess one of the strong suit of this uh, degree but other than that uh, all these subjects uh, i haven't you know stu i haven't studied them yet but you can go ahead and uh, check all these labels for this one and that's it for the subject part and then you have the final project it's according to whatever specialism that you take so now that i've talked about all these subjects let's talk about the coursera portal the coursera portal is pretty great all the weeks are divided and all the quizzes and the videos are divided into each weeks and you know the deadlines deadlines are also there you know how much time will it take uh, for you to complete that specific assignment and how long the videos are and all the collection of the reading material and all of the things all the resources are there and all of them are divided into weeks you can see your grades over there uh, and you and you are going to attempt your midterm here so whenever you have midterm it's on Coursera except for the finals but I'll talk about it so this is the Coursera portal you have all the subjects the subjects you have completed quizzes and everything Coursera page also leads to the Slack community and to be honest it's absolutely amazing it is uh, managed by the students themselves again and as long as 
all of the students are on Slack, you can talk to them. We all are online, right? Now, since we are online, there's no way of communicating with anyone. So having this group or this community of like four or 5,000 students there is absolutely amazing because you can communicate with them. Not each one of them you can't, but uh, you can communicate with many people that are active and the community itself is really active they post in the announcement if you miss your email uh, or if you didn't get an email or somebody else did from uh, from university of london then they would post it there uh, there's general chat there's meme channels there's a channel for each subject uh, it's really helpful and you can post in any question as long as uh, it's not about a graded assignment uh, which is great so if you are stuck in anything people will obviously help you and i really love this part of the degree because you can communicate with people you can even like if there's someone uh, that you found uh, in your city who also takes an online degree you can maybe go and meet them you can them up you can uh, hit a message up and say hi I want to meet uh, you live in let's say let's suppose somebody lives in Islamabad and I can you know contact them and ask them if uh, they want to hang out or something people do it uh, some people do it not everyone does it I don't do it I never made friends from Slack but I did like ask for help sometimes but I usually I go around solving my problems myself I'm an introvert person <laughs> okay so yeah, I'm not gonna disturb everyone for no reason. So yeah, Slack is absolutely amazing and probably the only thing that is keeping this degree alive because of the people and the students themselves. So the next most important thing, the examination. Now this is, again, uh, the two things to it. Let's first talk about the midterms. Midterms are all held on Coursera, all right? You have uh, the submission space that where you can submit your project or the assignment that you have uh, that you have completed on that portal if there's a research based work in which you have to research and write then there's ways of uh, you know writing in quotation and everything but uh, you get the point these midterms are assignment based and all are on Coursera that was all about the midterms but let's talk about the finals and as of right now all of the papers are online because of again covid uh, i started this degree like two years ago and i started when the covid you know started to spread really fast and they all cancelled the physical exams and they all had exams online and since those two years we still have online exams finals are held on moodle uh, it's not held on uh, coursera uh, it's their own platform it's basically moodle is an open source platform that they use uh, which is good uh, which is fine does the job and there's written assignment and mcqs uh, your status time during that whole one day whole 24 hours you can attempt them at any time and at a specific time to blend and whenever you start and the written assignments are you can start them at any time during 24 hours and you have 24 hours to complete it and you can make pdf and you can type or uh, write the answers so that's it about the exam talking about the physical exams so if you have ever given an OA level paper you know you go to a center you uh, register for your exams uh, like two months before and you pay for them so in the same way you pay for your exams you register them like two months before if they are physical right now they are not physical but if they get physical and after some time like one a year or two then you will have to go on the website the portal that you have the university of london portal not the course I one you go there then you register yourself for examinations you choose the center that is nearest to you in your city wherever you live and then you go on that specific date and then you give the paper those are again when you, those are invigilated right those papers are invigilated you have that specific time you've got one hour to complete your mcqs one and a half hour to complete that same questions you have again three questions out of two out of which you have to do two and you have 10 mcqs it's essentially the physical exams uh, are essentially the same paper that you're giving in the online version except you have a lot of time in the online version so right now things are quite easy you can attempt them and there is no invigilation right now it's working on the honesty system that is everything about the examinations chance you have watched my first video about the online degrees i talked about all 
all the time that it takes and I'll just repeat it again. Uh, the minimum time that you can complete this degree is three years. Maximum time that you can take is six years. So there are eight subjects per year. So it's level four, level five, level six as I talked about in the subject section. So if you take like four subjects per semester, each year you do eight subjects and then you can easily complete your degree in three years. If you want to take a break, just don't uh, register for your subjects and that's it. And if you want to complete it in six years, then you take two subjects per semester. So the fees, the fees, this is something that you should look into. I have all the links in the description for the fees, but I'll just explain how to look into it. Uh, so first thing, the fees has two types of countries. So the first type is the band A countries. The band A countries are usually the third world countries, like India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and all the countries that have band. But I'm just kidding. Then there's band B countries that is USA, UK, Australia, Germany, and most of the European countries, but you get the point. There are two types of categories for countries, and the band A countries pay less than the band B countries. I'm just gonna talk about completing this degree in three years. That means taking four subjects per semester. Now, taking four subjects per semester means that each subject is accounts for like 15 credit hours, and you can, for band A countries, you can almost look at 1250 pounds to 1800 pound range. Then 1250 pound is for the institute based and 1800 pounds for uh, web supported learning. But for band B, you can look at you can look at almost 1650 pounds to 2800 pounds, and these are estimated, right? And the fees increase five percent each year. Now you can go ahead and check which country you are in, which band country you are in, and see uh, how much you're going to be charged for each subject. Also, let's look for the 15 credit hour subjects, as you've seen in the subjects part and I was told again that almost all these subjects are accounted for only 15 credit hours so don't look at the 30 credit hours one because uh, there aren't any and if there is that's the fun project I guess so finally the good the bad and the ugly about the university oh. so the good about the university now, the first thing is obviously the flexibility. You have all the time freedom. You can do your degree at any time. You can study any time. You don't have to take any lectures, any live lectures. Yes, there are webinars, but again, you can take them. And if you want to, you cannot. If you don't want to, but you get the point. It's flexible. Second thing is cheap, right? This money that they're charging. Now, you might think, okay, I live in third world country. For me, it's pretty, it's still expensive because if I compare this degree to my local universities, those are quite cheaper, but uh, this one is expensive because again, I live in a third world country and the conversion, the price just, you know, uh, goes up. But for people usually, you know, comparing it to local universities is not the best justice with this degree. But if you compare this degree with uh, the on-campus degrees, like if I were to go to Goldsmiths and do a physical like physically go there and then I would be paying like almost what 10 times more about 27,000 pounds per year as an, as an international student so in that way I am able to get the same degree at my home by doing it all, all of the degree at my home so I have that comfort and uh, this is probably the best thing and kind of applies to everyone even if you're not living in the first world country so if you're living in India, you're living in Pakistan and you think this degree is expensive, it's not technically, it might be for you, but if you compare it to the, the most expensive degrees that are being offered abroad in USA, UK and Germany, not Germany, but yeah, you get the point. This is cheaper if in comparison to the physical universities. <sighs> the bad about the degree, it's, it's kind of disappointing because Okay, not disappointing, but um, there are a few subjects that I was really expecting that they would be really good. One of them was uh, web development, and I maybe talked about it in the subject section that it was fine, but again, the problem with it was that it in the final project that we had to do had really vague uh, guidelines, they weren't really clear, and that led to you know uh, a project that in which we invested our time and we gave it a lot of time which was good but again it wasn't up to their expectations 
and it led to a bad grade. Other than that, um, administration is quite bad. To be honest, I never had any problems with administration. I wouldn't make it a bad point, but it is for most of people. Administration is bad because they aren't as responsive sometimes. Sometimes they take weeks to reply to some people. Well, it never happened to me again. These things with the administration never happened to me. And once it happened that my um, fees, they changed the mode uh, by which we used to pay our fees. So my credit card got canceled like so many times that I had to go and go for a longer method and go for a bank transfer and that bank transfer to that intermediary and that intermediary got less money, like 30 pounds less. And uh, and all of this process was like, third, took 30 days, I took a month, but again, they gave me extension to pay. They said to pay it at any time, as long as you just pay. <laughs> But uh, they relieved, then they received 30 pounds less because of that bank transfer, that money got lost in between countries. I don't know why, but uh, they again, they cooperated and they you know, continued all these subjects, even though uh, I was 30 pounds short while paying this one subject. But again, I, I could access everything. I gave my exams and then the next semester, I paid for that, that 30 pounds that were remaining along with the more, more four subjects. And the second time I went with that uh, payment option, it all, all of it worked, my credit card worked and everything worked fine. And it was solved. But for other people, when it comes to uh, responses, and some other issues that I might know about, I might don't know about, but uh, people have encountered. And if you are a university plan student studying computer science, uh, just drop in the comments if you have any like reported any problems that I haven't mentioned. Like I have the payment issue, I had the payment issue, but I don't have it now. But there might be another problems that people have like faced. But administration, as long as far as I have seen. Uh, for me, it wasn't a problem, but for other people, it, it is a big problem. <sighs> the ugly. The ugliest thing is that you first, you give your exams and after like 20 days, another semester starts. You don't get any breaks. So the only break you get is between semesters and semesters have like 30 day break, almost 30, 25 day break. And that's the only break you get. You don't get any uh, June, July or summer vacations or anything. Just don't expect this from this degree. But you give your papers and you know, you expect them, you expect the results to come in like few weeks, right? Three weeks, two weeks. And that's the maximum time you think it would take for the, tu the tutors or the teachers to check the papers. But it doesn't. It takes two months for the papers to be checked and you just get the marks and that's it just get the marks and that's it you don't get the result itself like what what did go wrong why why did i lost 30 marks why did i lost like two marks or why did i lost this why was this wrong or was this wrong i just get the marks i don't get the response for my paper and that also you know, applies to midterms too sometimes you get the response for midterms but most of the times there is no response for the midterms and for the finals uh, even for project projects sometimes you do sometimes like few subjects i got for like introduction to programming one and introduction to programming two i got a response which was quite good and they identified the mistakes that i made but other than that all of the other subjects i never got any response for any one of them i just got the grades an overview of why am i still doing this degree and what are the reasons the first reason is that the education they're giving is good and I'm able to get it from the comfort of my home. This is the best thing and I'm, I will be getting an international degree along with everyone else who is doing this degree by sitting here in Pakistan, right? This is the this is like the utmost priority. I don't care about administration because I have seen the worst administration and in, in institu institutions and if I were going to a local university, it would have the worst administration. So I know how like worse things work. So this thing uh, doesn't seem that bad to me. You know, I just 
know I've coped with it and I just don't care about it that much. The only thing that I care about is the is the subjects themselves and when the subjects are not well taught, even if they are not well taught, you can go online and you can study, you know. They are giving the reading material and there are professors in physical universities where they are not teaching well and you have to go on to the internet and research and you know do it yourself. But the same way here, if the teachers, if the that those videos aren't as good, which in it is in some cases, not the most, uh, people might find videos boring, right? There are videos that are boring, but again, you have to like make yourself study. I talked about it in one of the videos. You can click it and watch it right here and up here, whatever the place is. But uh, you get the point, right? Education is one of my utmost priority and that is why I don't care about administration and because this degree is cheaper than international degrees like if I were to go to USA and study it's way cheaper than this is way cheaper than that so I'm getting like everything so I have to make some compromises with administration or you know not getting my results on time so that's it or that's everything that you had to know about uh, University of London and the degree uh, University of London and Goldsmiths and the computer science degree and I hope this video was helpful and wow this was this was a long video but also before I end this video thank you to everyone who watched this channel and I've got like 127 subscribers now and it's amazing that I got my first 100 subscribers so thank you so much for watching this video and all the other videos if you have watched the previous ones too comment down below if you have any other questions i'll get back to you and if you have any other questions from me that you want to ask me you can go and reach out to me on instagram or you can email me and i'll see you guys in the next one